17 mosaic tips in 10 minutes and we're going to be covering a fairly broad range so let's get cracking and I'll show you those right now. When you're choosing your tessera at the start, choose your grout colour at the same time. It's going to make your life a lot easier when you finish your piece and you already know what grout colour to use. It's by far easier to change the tessera colour now than what it is to try and get a grout colour at the end that's going to work with everything. So if you're looking at, say, using this piece with the black, oh, it's going to be a bit dark with the black, so you know to use a shade or two lighter where it's going to work with the grout colour. It's going to make your life a lot easier, and it's going to go a lot smoother if you choose your grout at the start when you're choosing your tessera. If you're working with stained glass, or you're going to be working with stained glass, you'll find if you have the stained glass at room temperature, then when it comes to scoring, breaking and shaping of the stained glass, you'll find it'll be a bit easier for you to work with. If you're using grout or thin set, don't force cure it. And what I mean by that is don't put it in front of a heater or use any artificial heat on it. It needs to cure at its own rate. If you force it to cure, then you can compromise the integrity of the thin set or the grout. So let it cure at its own rate. If you're looking at working with stained glass for the first time and you're looking at doing some scoring and breaking and shaping of the stained glass, don't use your stained glass. Use your clear ordinary glass because that's going to be by far cheaper to use than what it is using your very good stained glass that you've paid a lot more money for. So use your clear glass to practice on. If you're looking at creating a mosaic for outside, avoid using wood, even marine ply. There are by far better substrates to use such as Marmox board or weedy board, cement sheet, they are better to use outside and give you greater longevity than what uh, marine ply or any other wood type of product would do. So use the correct substrates for outside so that your mosaic will last a long time. In this photo I'm using thin set. Now thin set is American terminology for cement based adhesive. Now the thin set I'm using is the same colour as what I'm going to be grouting in. And the reason being is that thin set can get into your grout lines and if it's the same colour it doesn't matter if you get a bit too much into your grout lines because it's the same colour as you're, you're going to be grouting in. But if it's not the same colour then you have to make sure that you keep it well below your tessera to allow for your coloured grout to go in there. So having the same colour thin set will just streamline the process and save you a lot more cleaning up. If you're using beads in your mosaic, and most times I do, then you want the beads to sit proud above the rest of the tessera, like in this photo that I've put up on screen now. These beads sit proud so they're not buried in with the grout and I didn't have to dig them out. If you're using um, any size bead, they just have to sit that bit higher than the tessera because if you're using round beads, and most of them are round beads, the surface area is not that great. So you need to have them sit a bit higher than the rest of the tessera if you're using small beads like this, which is fine to use, but it depends on how high the rest of the tessera is because what you don't want to do is use beads like this and they get buried in grout because it's going to be a nightmare to dig them out. So you can artificially boost them up from underneath, but that's a bit of work. Using the correct size beads is going to make sure that you're not going to be spending a lot of time digging them out from the grout. When you're working on a mosaic, it's always good to take a black and white photo occasionally, especially if you're going to be adding more tessera to the existing tessera. And the reason being is that when you take a black and white photo, it shows you the colour hues better so that you can make the changes before you glue them down. What you don't want to do is have the colour hues very similar because you're not going to get that definition. For instance, if you had a background and you had trees, and the, the trees were going to be a similar hue to the background, it would blend and you wouldn't get that really good definition between the two. So by taking a black and white photo occasionally, or when you're adding new tessera, it will save you a lot of heartache further down the track. Looking for an easy way on how to hang your beads or your hanks of beads? I've got you covered. Paper clips are wonderful. Just get one, open it up, open up that bit there and that bit there, and you have a cheap hanger, such as these ones here. And then you can hang them anywhere. 
If you're going to be working on your mosaics all day or for a long period of time, it's important that you have a break every half hour and have a bit of a stretch and a walk because otherwise you'll end up with an aching back or a aching neck and you need to avoid that and you need to also have drinks throughout the day because it's very easy when you're working on a mosaic, the day just goes and before you realize you go, wow, I've been here for four and five hours and I haven't even had a drink. There are apps out there in the marketplace that will allow you to set a time or your, your phone will do it anyway for every half hour it will just let you know that it's time to have a bit of a walk, a bit of a stretch, and a bit of a drink if you need one. When I'm taking photos of my mosaics, and I put one up on screen to show you, most times I just use two ordinary desk lamps. The important thing is to make sure that they have the same globe in them. And the reason being is that some globes give off a warm temperature, which creates a yellow tinge. Uh, I prefer the white ones, the white light, and the reason being is I find they give a better color reproduction. So that's quite important. Now all I do is I position the lights at, at the ca uh, away from the camera, but at the side of the camera, and I face them inwards towards the mosaic. Now then I look for shadows and things like that if I want to highlight shadows, and I move them around where required. Now one of the secrets to this is that you need to get down and look through the camera or at the camera level, so as you can see what the camera is going to see. It's pointless looking at it from the side, and you go, okay, that's a perfect picture, but the camera doesn't see it from that angle. So I look from where the camera is, and I just move them around to highlight the shadows or whatever I want to highlight, and then I then take the shot. And you can take a good photo with your Android phone or your iPhone without a problem, especially these days, the cameras on them are sensational. When I'm working on mosaics, I like to take color photos, work in progress shots. I also like to take a color photo at the very end of when the piece is finished, so I've got that to look back on. But the work in progress shots I find are quite important because when the camera takes the shot, it can pick up on things that we don't normally see. I find that that reinforces the direction I'm taking for the overall design, or if there's something I need to change that's probably not quite right in the position that I've put it in. Now don't confuse this with taking black and white photos for the color hues, two different processes. This is just for looking at it through different eyes and a different perspective, because by doing that, you can see things through the camera that you wouldn't normally see because we're so close to the piece we create. If you're looking at cutting crockery with your nippers, it's always a good idea to put them right on the edge like that and then squeeze. In some cases you can put them further in, but in most cases just on the edge will do it. The same as this bowl, have a look at your design and then where you want to break it, put, it right, put your nippers right on the edge there and squeeze. Always keep an eye out for anything on the back because there might be some patterns there that you may want to keep. And the same as this plate, have a look at your pattern, decide where you want to break it and then put your nippers on the edge there and squeeze. Now sometimes the magic works where it breaks where you want and sometimes it just doesn't, which is the nature of the beast. You finished your mosaic and you want to take a photograph but you don't have lights to help illuminate it, very easy workaround. Take the mosaic outside on a cloudy day and take the shot. Don't take the shot when it's bright and sunny because it'll blow your colors out and you won't be happy with your photo. Now another alternative what you can do is take your photo of the mosaic near a window but make sure it's on a cloudy day because what you're looking for is an even light coming through and on a bright sunny day it's too harsh. So taking it on a cloudy day works extremely well. Even if you're taking it with your camera phone you'll get a great shot. If you're looking at buying a new stained glass grinder or you're currently using one, one of the important things you need to do with them is take off the grinding head from the spindle occasionally. Because if you don't, it will seize onto the spindle due to the amount of water that this uses. Now if you're looking at buying a second hand one, that's one of the important things you need to look at. Check to see that the grinding head comes off the, the spindle and if it doesn't, don't buy it. Because you won't be able, to, the chances are you won't be able to get it off and you'll end up with a grinding head that is going to be worn down and a wonderful grinder that you won't be able to use. And this one here is actually seized onto the spindle and here's a close-up of it now. And I 
was given this particular grinder. Uh, and so that's fine, it hasn't cost me anything, but it's just a shame because it is a good brand and I can't get the grinding head off. So it's very, very important. Remove the grinding head occasionally so that it doesn't seize on and you can, you can replace that grinding head when it gets worn down. If you're looking at creating a mosaic and you're after a nice clean front on your mosaic like this piece has here, then mosaic the sides first. Here's a photo up on screen now with the sides uh, being done first. Where the two surface areas meet creates a grout line and that grout line will run around the outside edge of the mosaic and not on the front. If you were to create the front of the mosaic first and then the sides, then your grout line would run around the top here, which is fine because a lot of people do that, but if you're just after that clean look and you don't want the grout line showing, well then do your sides first because your grout line will always be on the side. Well, this is the last mosaic tip from this current series. And the mosaic tip is, when you create, create from your heart and not your mind. And the reason being is that we are so conditioned from childhood to teenager years to adult life that we tend to lose who we actually are. When you create from your heart, you can be who you actually are. The problem with it is that because we're so conditioned, it's very hard to find out who we actually are and it takes time to actually create from your heart rather than your mind. But if you love all the tessery you're using and you're creating from your heart, the piece will always work out perfectly. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the current series. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you've taken something away from it. And I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy.